Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I hope you're doing really great. And so I am here with the latest in terms of what is going on across the Atlantic. So focus will be on Invest 95L, which has a much higher chance to develop into a tropical cyclone now. And so let's get straight into it. But before I go into details, if you haven't yet done so, please subscribe and tap the bell so that you'd never miss an important update. All right, so we're starting out uh, taking a look at these satellite imagery here of the North Atlantic, and we can see that there is some activity going on across some areas uh, off the southeastern coast, well off the southeastern coast, and to the north of the eastern Caribbean. There we can see that there is some thunderstorm activity taking place, some of which is in association with a trough. Looking into the northwestern Caribbean, going over to the Yucatan, parts of uh, western Cuba, there is some thunderstorm activity as well. But as for the rest of the basin, it has been pretty dry and hot and also hazy and even windy for some of us uh, so that Saharan dust is making its way in and that is helping to stabilize conditions and as such much rainfall is not expected and we don't really see any taking place right now across most Caribbean islands but looking up into, uh, into Florida we can see that there is some activity developing as we head into northern South America there is also some thunderstorm activity in the area but now we want to go ahead and drift further to the east where there is Invest 95L. And I want to point out that this disturbance is getting itself together. So there we have it right there, and uh, here we have it. Now, if we should look at the visible satellite imagery, you can see that circulation, that counterclockwise or anti-clockwise circulation. And so a low pressure area has developed, and so we're seeing that it is trying to sustain activity. But the problem is there is a lot of dry air uh, to the north of it. Let's go on to the dry air map, uh, the Saharan earlier map rather and here we can see that there's lots of dry air that is to the north of it and that is going to be a problem it'll try to help to suppress any major intensification of it but nevertheless it could pull through and actually become a depression as we're going to be heading into next week and so uh, let's now go ahead and take a look at what models have to show here so in terms of uh, the track guidance and the intensity guidance so we'll be looking at those uh, for the general models and then we will be focusing on the GFS and Euro so uh, we are looking at the model track guidance and here we can see that there is a difference compared to this morning uh, this morning they were a bit more dispersed across the lesser Antilles in terms of the possible track now we're seeing them kind of coming together and that is indicating some more consistency and more agreement so we have this sort of consensus here that it's likely the windward islands that are going to be impacted by this as it continues toward the west in terms of the intensity now we're seeing something pretty interesting here here. Some of these models are expecting that, hey, this could become a hurricane uh, in the long term. And I wouldn't say that is impossible, but as of right now, uh, the shear might kick up in the Caribbean once it makes its way in. Uh, and that could be a major issue because that helps to displace activity from the center of the system and prevent it from having that symmetrical uh, appearance. And so wind shear along with dry air, that is going to be helping to uh, limit intensification and induce weakening and eventual dissipation of the system but I see a tropical storm very much likely and again the next name to be used for this hurricane season is Emily and so as I said now we want to focus on the GFS and Euro so we're looking at the ensemble members first for Euro and so we can see that we have all these different tracks uh, they look colorful as well and so as we head uh, up the scale here going more to that shade of orange pink that is where we have a stronger system heading on to hurricane intensity and so uh, we see that a lot of these members they're very dispersed right now some of them expecting that this will miss the Caribbean I see that unlikely at this point I think it will enter even if it starts to take on an eventual west northwestward or northwestward track uh, but I, I see it enter in the region and uh, there is that black line there so that black line is the mean or the average of all of these different members and we see that it takes it on a westward track coming in starts to move a bit to the west northwest near Jamaica heading over into the northwestern Caribbean uh, going on to the GFS ensemble members they're showing a much weaker system notice that these tracks are not as colorful so they're expecting something weaker and that average line just continues 
westwards. So it really has it as maybe a strong tropical wave, but not showing it as a very strong cyclone out there. And so uh, as for what the National Hurricane Center has, as I said earlier, the chance has increased uh, from 40% in the 8 a.m. updates to 60% now. So 60% chance through the next seven days. And so only time will tell, but it is small, it's looking compact, and it is trying to get itself together. So I think that it will pull through. And if you're in the Lesser Antilles, especially the Windward Islands, I want you guys to pay attention to this. I will continue to give updates as time goes by. And so that is what I wanted to share with you in this evening update, just to bring you guys up to speed with what is happening with it and uh, what is expected by the various models. And so uh, even if this does not become a tropical cyclone, if it is strong enough with enough activity, it could induce a lot of heavy rainfall and that can cause flooding, landslides. Uh, and so I will be keeping you guys posted as time goes by. So that is pretty much it for right now. And I hope you found this video to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will respond once I get the chance. And as always, remember to be weatherwise.